come together, we don't need an outside force to do nothing for us. We self-sufficient. If you want to, you were saying that we don't have um, economic structures and stuff like that. We need to patronize ourselves. We need to, to patronize black businesses. Money does not stay in the black community. Exactly. So if it doesn't, if it's going out the community, how are you supporting yourself? And we steady asking for someone else to do something for us that we have to do for ourselves. I agree. Let me just say this. When I don't think it's a matter of begging for something, but I think we have to achieve clarity. Every Monday, every Monday morning, your preacher or somebody's preaching here goes and takes your money to the bank. To the bank. Yes. Every time you go to the mall, they take your money to the bank. Every time you go to one of these stores, they take your money to the bank. And then the bank uses that money and loan it to other people to make money from your money. But when you go to the bank and ask them for a business loan with your own money, you can't get the money. I'm that's with your you. money. I'm that's your money. With you. So that's not begging. The city government here, every year, the city government gets tons and tons of money. They get it from so-called uh, community, uh, what is it, block grant monies. Uh, they get, uh, also, they give away monies. They give away monies to corporations and things like that. But our community, they use, that's our money. That's the taxpayer's money. That's your money, too. But when you go and tell to the city council and say, look, we need this for our people, this ain't begging. We saying we want our money, that you're giving our money to all these other corporations and other things. We want some of our money too. So that's not begging. So I agree with you that we have the ability to do a lot for ourselves and we should once we become conscious that we are an oppressed people. Yes. And that yes. if, because if you say we got to do it for ourselves, what that means is America does not treat us like citizens. It treats us like subjects, like a colonized population. When I saw those, that military equipment here in Ferguson, it, I've seen it all over this country, but it's the same stuff that you see they use in Afghanistan. Yes, yes, you know, so it is. It's they the treat the Afghans. Why? Because the Afghans and the Africans in this country are, are perceived in the same fashion. We are colonized people, and it takes extreme violence to keep an oppressed people who built this country, who built this country. All the wealth that we see in this country was built of black labor. Yeah. So, so it takes extreme violence to be able to keep us living in these circumstances that they have imposed on us, right? So Mike Brown, if he went into a store, if he took some cigars in this community, I saw them um, standing up saying that they were not, they were gonna prevent people from taking anything else from their store. Those were not Africans who were standing there, but all the money in our community goes to some other community because we can't get hold of our own resources. So I don't wanna hear anything about thieves, I don't want to hear anything about violence because the violence is what that's imposed on us and it's extreme violence that's necessary to keep us in the situation that we're locked in today. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So we got to build a revolutionary force. Yeah. We got to build people, we got to have a, a revolutionary force because they say, well, sister said, well, well, you can't win, they'll kill us. They're killing us, we ain't revolutionary. Anyway, Michael Brown was not a revolutionary, he was just walking down the street. All you got to do is be black in this country and most of the world and you're going to catch hell. So we have to we have to come up with alternatives of our own. This is ours, right? I don't care. They're talking about finding racial peace. I'm not looking for racial peace. I'm looking for freedom for black people. Because the racial, it's not racial disruption. The only thing that busts up what they call racial peace is the oppression of black people. Stop oppressing us and it can be peace. And it can be peace. That's right. That's the thing. And so we have to get organized. You know what we have to do? And what Ferguson has done so eloquently, they will keep doing it until we can deliver a consequence. Yeah. When we start delivering That's a right. consequence, they will stop oppressing us. That's, right, right. That's the only thing that will stop an oppressor from oppressing you, the ability to build, to deliver a consequence. So we have to build enough muscle, enough organization, enough cohesion, consolidate ourselves around some basic kinds of demands. I say demands because this movement has to have a message because there's no message coming out from the community. Do you understand what I'm saying? People say, wow, Ferguson, Ferguson, very, everybody in the world proud of you. Everybody all over the world. I'm in St. Petersburg, Florida. They're having a demonstration in solidarity with African people in Ferguson. They're doing it all over the country. The Palestinians, the Iranians, the, the, the people all over are talking about solidarity here, but we don't have a message. And we gotta have a message. We must be able to have a coherent message leaving Ferguson so that the world can know what it is they are uniting with. What is the message? The message is, among the things, first of all, they have to end the colonial domination of black people in this country because Ferguson, is America. One. Two, we have to immediate reparations to the family of Michael Brown. That family should be, everything that could, that's possible to repair that family should be done right away. Three, immediate withdrawal of the police from this community. And I say police, I'm talking about all the military forces, all the military forces, from the National Guards to, to, to Brennan Johnson, uh, to uh, 
to the FBI, all of them out of here, community control of the police. If somebody's going to have a gun walking through our community, control. the community should be controlling that police. We should have control. We should have hiring and firing ability. So we don't have to ask somebody to indict him. We can indict him if he's going to do something in our community. Can we ask uh, you what your we, name is? I can shut up to this late. What your name is? My name is Omali Yishatella. You can't spell it. <laughs> can, you, can you spell it? It's O-M-A-L-I, Omali. Y e s h i t e l a. And what brings you here? You seem to have gotten a lot of attention. People are listening to you. What brings me here is 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 the attack on black people. Are you from Ferguson? I'm from. Uh, all of us are from Ferguson. <laughs> where, where are you from? I'm coming here from Florida. Florida. Yes. Sorry. Continue. What, you were on a roll. You were on a roll. I've, I've, I just got off an airplane and walked to Ground Zero. You know, and walked to Ground Zero. We're from back east. We just got off. Right on. Walked to Ground Zero. All right. Uh, so you were saying about what we need to do. Yeah, and I'm saying that uh, 